On today's show, the LA Clippers defeat Paul George and the 76ers in his return as he was booed in every possession. The Clippers are back to 500. What led to the win in such an important game in Clipper history? Yes, I said history. Going to be talking about it all on today's Locked On Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the Clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day, your team every day. I'm your host, Darren Viziri, born and raised in L.A. and in my 20th season as a Clipper fan. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more Clipper content. A video of my experience at Paul George's return from the wall will be out, including a lot of thoughts from fans about Paul George and the game itself. And Locked on Clippers is free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Let me know what you thought. Uh, I think of what what you thought of the game, what you think of the episode, and of Paul George, of course. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet at FanDuel.com. And your favorite podcast now has a newsletter introducing the Locked On Clippers daily newsletter written by yours truly. One stop for ultimate team and league coverage delivered right to your inbox. Sign up for free now at LockedOnDaily.com. That's LockedOnDaily.com and start your day with the all new free Locked On Clippers newsletter. Clipper Nation, how we feeling? I'll tell you how I'm feeling. Really good, tired physically, but still very energized mentally for this episode. How could I not be buzzing after that one? My voice, if it sounds a little bit more croaky or raspy than normal, I lost a lot of it booing Paul George. So let's get into that. We're going to talk also about the standout performer in this game. And to be honest, this season of Norman Powell and the defense and what I why I thought that led us to the win but we're just going to we're going to hit all the points. Let's start with the beginning. Paul George. He got we were waiting for him to come out of the tunnel because the Sixers team had come and we didn't see Paul. Eventually he comes out and he's coming out in that tunnel. The away tunnel is right in front of the wall. So when he comes out, we are booing him big time when we saw him walk out and they started dancing Kyle Lowry and Paul George. They were like d- dancing to the booze and acknowledging it. So I thought that was fun. But before I say anything more about the crowd, cause I know that was a big thing going into this game. The attendance at into a dome is concerning for a fan like me. If you're a Clipper fan, try to get one of these wall passes or supporters passes. And let me ask a question for those that aren't, why aren't you? Let me know in the comments. I'm just curious, right? Because the, here's the thing. It's just a bad look when you have such an incredible stadium and you have worse attendance than you had in the Staples Center. The Kawhi thing definitely is concerning, and that's definitely why some people don't want to come. I'm not seeing that concentration of neutrals that we used to have that were like Laker fans or just fans that wanted to come see a game, which I'm fine with. But you're pricing out your own fans, and the $70, $60 parking is really bad. I mean, there's no, the best player on your team is 35-year-old James Harden. You shouldn't be charging that much. I get it's a new stadium, but what are you going to do? Unless you're going to have games like this that should be more affordable, a little more empty than you want it to be. Because if we had had even more people, the booze would have been even louder. Because I had heard them on TV, and they sounded pretty good. Louder than any Clipper game has ever booed an opposing player. I talked about Elton Brand on the episode on Wednesday, but this was on a nationally televised game. But it was not great attendance. So get to the games, people. But also, I want to know your reasons if you're not. Paul George actually had a really good game shooting the ball. But he had some some things that we knew were... I shouldn't say knew were going to happen. But there were things that he did that we are used to. One, 
all the shots he was hitting, and for a while he hadn't even missed. He finished the game eight. I'm sorry, seven for nine. And he was on a minutes restriction, so he only played 24 minutes. But he finished with 18 points, seven boards, two assists, three steals, and a block to go along with seven for nine shooting and two for three from deep. But all his shots were contested jumpers, all of them. And as I said in the episode on Wednesday, he did not have a good shooting game against Phoenix in his first game. So it's very likely he could have one of those heaters against us, which he did, but because he was on a minutes restriction and when he's in the game, one, he doesn't work very hard for the ball. He doesn't demand the ball. We know that. Two, we did a pretty good job denying him the ball and getting our hands in passing lanes all night long and especially in the second half. But overall, I'm happy that he was on a minutes restriction because he was hitting. I can't even hate. But one thing we were doing was we weren't letting him get anywhere with the handle. All his shots are contested jumpers. We know as Clipper fans that's not sustainable for him. And he was turning the ball over left and right. It was funny in the beginning of the game when he was making passes off the live dribble. We were like, I, I was like watching my head because I knew he might pass it out of bounds. And he was nearly throwing, overthrowing, you know, players. It was crazy. His passing, he's still loosey-goosey. He's still going to turn the ball over a lot. He turned the ball over four times in this game. And we as a team did an incredible job of forcing turnovers for the entire 76ers team. And that comes from good man-to-man -man defense, you know, at the point of attack, good, so, good solid rotations, but also having active hands in the passing lanes. I think the Clippers this season do a really good job of just having their hands out, making themselves big off the ball. And I think Chris Dunn and Nico Batum, and Derek Jones Jr. are probably the best examples of that. But James Harden, you know, he has his fair share of strips throughout games. He's really good with his hands. In the first half, he was appalling defensively. I can't lie. First quarter, he was just bad all the way around. But I thought he picked it up defensively in the second half, and they were targeting him a lot. Both teams, as I mentioned in the Wednesday episode, were targeting the opposing team's point guard. So Clippers were going for Maxi because they knew he was going to switch on the pick and roll, and then the uh, Sixers were going for Harden. And I thought in the first half, Harden got blown by a couple times way too easily, but in the second half, he did a very good job of staying solid, being physical, and he got his hands on some, on some of the ball defensively. As far as Maxi, I thought Harden did a pretty good job of – not necessarily blowing by him, but trying to bully him a bit and at times forced help, and that got the ball moving, and we had guys attacking closeouts, namely Norman Powell, who was just unbelievable in this game, and we'll talk about it more in the second segment. But he had 26 points to lead the way, and a lot of those are with James Harden's dribble penetration and just the attention that he's drawing. I also thought we did a very good job throughout the game, just like we did against San Antonio, of feeding Zoo and Norm more in the first half and letting Harden slowly cook more in the second half, which is probably something that the coaching staff has tried to do to have James Harden, you know, fresher in the second half of games. I've already seen a little bit of it in these first two games. But again, the Sixers without Embiid aren't a very good team, especially with Paul George on a minutes restriction. But I have to say, I thought Terrence Mann did a very good job. As I mentioned, he, was, he would be guarding Tyrese Maxey if Derek Jones Jr. was guarding Paul George. And I thought he did a pretty decent job keeping him in check. But of course, Maxi tried to get Harden on the switch a lot, and I thought he held his own. Another guy that he tried to get into the switch was Norman Powell. I thought he held his own. But overall, the Paul George return, it was epic. It was fun. The Clippers had their first double-digit win of the season by turning it around in the second half. I shouldn't say turning it around, really turning up the gas. And it starts with our defense. That first quarter, Philly actually outscored us 27-24 because we didn't do a good enough job on the glass. And also, guys were just passing up wide-open shots. Terrence, Kevin Porter Jr., Chris Dunn, even James Harden, I believe, one time. Second quarter, it was actually the exact same score, but flipped. Clippers 27, Sixers 24. How often do you see that? So we're deadlocked at the half. And then in this third quarter, we turned it around. Or really, as I said, turned on the gas. 33 to 17 Clippers in the third. And in the fourth quarter, they outscored us 30 to 26, but we went up by as many as 22, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 22. But yeah, attendance listed at 15,627 in a stadium of 18,000. So not a great sign there. 
as far as some big takeaways, the Paul George return was fun. It was epic. It was historic because, you know, oh, by the way, so he got his video tribute and even the wall, most people were clapping. I was just filming. I didn't know how to react, to be honest. I just wanted to hear the wall because not that I don't appreciate Paul George for what he did. I appreciate it greatly. I acknowledge that he could honestly be the third best Clipper of all time, but, but I didn't feel like appreciating him tonight. I thought after all these years, I've backed him up. He's stuck his foot in his mouth so many times and just showed a lack of desire at times for a championship and never took accountability really outside of the 2021 season and the 2022 season. I think these last two years were just, he was all over the place and he was the first year as well. So even the comments he's made after didn't deserve any love, but I, I was okay with applauding during the video tribute. Some people were still booing, but he, clapped for the rest of the arena and then waved off the wall because we booed him all night. But pff, he's a joker. After the game, he even mentioned that uh, I, it's stupid. Like, dude, he just he's just so, like, unaware of what he says and does. Like, and if people were wondering, there were signs that said, PG, watch what you... Some, I think it was watch what you speak or watch when you speak or something like that. Think before you speak, I believe it was. I mean, some of it was a little forced, in my opinion, but it was all fun and games. I, I think Paul George deserved what he got. He still had a very solid game. He turned the ball over four times and lost. So who really won? Who really got, you know, is ended up with the last laugh? The Clippers and their fans. 110-98, we win it. That's two in a row. Four and four on the season. Clippers win the Paul George revenge game. More like us getting revenge for the stuff you put us through outside of one year. Coming up, going to be talking about the man who I think has been our best player this season, point blank, through the first eight games, Norman Powell. I got to tell you a little something about skims. You know, underwear is, is a very important part of your comfort. Very important. Some people like their underwear tighter. Some people looser. When I found out Skims was making underwear for men, I have to admit, I was pretty excited. I've only heard about it for women, but men, I was like, huh, I'll, you know, that sounds interesting. As you know, I like to exercise a lot, but I've never liked wearing that synthetic feeling workout underwear, especially when I'm done at the gym. When I tried Skims Stretch Box for Briefs, it felt like I found the missing link. They give me all the movement I need for working out without feeling like I'm walking around wearing gym clothes the rest of the day. Plus, they never lose their shape or ride up. And maybe it's in my head, but I swear since I started wearing these, my gains have improved too. Trust me, when it comes to underwear, I've now tried them all, and Skims is the best to do it. Shop Skims Men's at Skims.com. Let them know we sent you. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop down menu that follows. And if you're looking for the perfect gifts for the whole family, Skims just launched their biggest holiday shop ever, also available at skims.com. All right, so back here to talk about the Clippers' 110-98 win over the Philadelphia 76ers in Paul George's return. It was a very satisfying night for Clipper fans who were passionately booing the man every time he touched the ball, which, again, has only been done with Elton Brand in his return. And, of course, this was a bigger occasion. The national TV got a tribute video and waved off the wall, so it's... You know, it's still going to be smoked for the next couple of years. But a guy who's really been leading the way... And his comments on Paul George leaving, being addition by subtraction, having being, I'm sorry, are being aged, are aging like fine wine right now, Norman Powell. Norman Powell has been unbelievable to start this season. And in this game, had his best passing game as a Clipper. I think Norman Powell is just, listening to the show and just marking off things that I'm saying. It's like, all right, you're going to say I can't do this? I'm going to just do this. <laughs> I'm joking. But it's all love for Norman Powell. If he's showing me more than I realize he has, then by all means, I'm okay to be wrong. He had some nice dribbles tonight. I'm sorry, passes tonight and dribbles that weren't the jump pass and scoop underneath around the basket. 
there was one play he made where they started blitzing him, by the way, because if you're in drop coverage against Norman Powell, I'm just going to say, even though he's not much of a pick-and-roll ball handler, we're starting to give him some reps. If you're not up as the guy who's guarding the screener on that, or you're not switching, you're toast because he's pulling up for three and he's draining everything right now. The amount of confidence that he's shooting with is insane. And we one thing we know about Norman Powell that Paul George doesn't have is a relentless scoring appetite. He's going to come in and he's going to get shots up and he's good at what he does, which is scoring the ball efficiently off the catch. But in this game, he started showing some more creation. He had a nice crossover where he rejected a screen, made a play, kicked it out to Terrence Mann for three. And I'm sorry, I think it was the pass to, to Derek Jones he had on that, which is a great lob. But on the Terrence Mann three-pointer, and Terrence had a really solid stretch in the beginning of that third quarter. But in the first half, still not shooting the ball. But I thought he did a good job defensively on Maxi. But with Terrence, he needs to shoot the ball. And it's not just open threes. At times, he's under the rim on an offensive rebound. He's not going up strong. And it's like, dude, it's okay if you get blocked. It is what it is. But I thought second half, he had a nice stretch where he hit a three, went coast to coast where he looked someone off. And it was kind of a fake, you know, the defender bit. And Terrence went all the way for a little layup, a little reverse. That little one-two picks up the ball, reverse with the right hand. But Norm, that curl going to his right, I mean, I've mentioned it for a while since I became the host of this show, but it's getting spammed more than ever. And I don't understand why the Sixers are still just like fighting over the top of the screen. I think they got to just top block Norm and force him to back cut because if you're going to force him over the top, he's really good at turning the corner and he's so strong that he'll put his shoulder in and he'll still just get that layup. And if you go into him too hard, he will get that foul call. So right now, he's playing lights out. I think he's going to be able to average 20-plus points per game this season. But how much? Are we talking 23-plus? In this game, he had 26 to go along with six assists, which is the most he's had as a clipper. Some really nice passes on the live dribble. So maybe he's got some pick-and-roll chops more than we know, more than we've seen as a clipper. But... The efficiency is what's incredible. Eight for 10 from the field. 80%. And he shouldn't like almost all jumpers in this game. Six for eight from three. Are you, are you serious? 75% from three? This is crazy. Four for four from the foul line. It was absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. And there was one three he hit. Where he was talking trash to the Sixers bench. And also, defensively, He's been really solid this season so far. And in this game, he was no different. Really bodying up, getting physical, defending, and moving his feet. And just being aware, being alert, having more of an attention to detail and more pride guarding the ball than I've seen him have in all his years as a Clipper. And he mentioned that before the season started in training camp. He said that he was going to try to play better defense this year and get back to his UCLA days and early Raptors days. And right now he's doing that, plus playing the best basketball offensively of his career. I know it's only been eight games, but he's so aggressive that I feel like he's going to be able to get 15-plus in his sleep. And most nights he'll do a little better than 15, so he's going to average 20-plus, which is going to be amazing. And, man, addition by subtraction. It's looking like he's backing up his talk. Coming up, though, going to be talking about what defensively was so interesting and what made the difference in that second half, or should I say who made the difference in that second half. I got to tell you a little something about FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. And let me tell you, for this weekend with the NFL odds, we've got the Buffalo Bills at the Indianapolis Colts. Bills are minus 3.5. As far as the LA scene, we have the Titans at the Chargers at SoFi. Chargers minus 7.5. Then the Dolphins at the Rams. Sounds like Sunday Night Football. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL.
All right. Clippers winning in Paul George's return, 110 to 98. He said he didn't understand the booze. They're stupid. All right, buddy. I don't have to, you know, rehash all the stuff I've already said on this show time and time again. But you know what I've loved this season about our Clipper team, and we knew it was going to be the case before the season even began? The defense. The amount of defense first guys that we have. Zubats is rim protection. Changes shots so frequently that I become accustomed to it. Sometimes I don't even acknowledge it on a possession. I'll be like, oh, yeah, Zoo's rim protection is solid. I, I won't even think it. I won't even say it because it's just, I. it's expected. It's regular. And that's a luxury. That's me being a privileged fan of having a good rim protector. Then there's Terrence Mann, who even when we get critical of him and he gets foul prone, he's still working hard defensively. He's never going to just not care defensively. You love to see that. Then you have a Derek Jones, who at times this season has been back cut a little easily, lost sight of his man off the ball. In this game, Paul George was draining shots in his face. But overall, solid defense, always working hard on that end. His speed rotating is amazing. The way he covers ground, his active hands. And in this game, he had several nice lobs and athletic plays. It's just so nice to have that athleticism on this team. 14 points, four boards, two assists, no turnovers on five for six on the field and one for two from three and made all three of his free throws. Had a very nice and one. And in this game, defensively, there were moments in that second half where the Sixers were sending to a James Harden for a sec. With Norman Powell as well. A little bit of, by the way, one time when Norman Powell blitzed and he went between his legs to split the double and kicked it to Terrence, I was like, oh my God, Wow. But James Harden, they were starting to throw two at him for a second, and that was allowing the guys like Derek Jones Jr., Chris Dunn, and Amir Coffey and Terrence Mann to get in those short roll situations. And I thought they did a pretty good job making decisions out of those, which made the Sixers go back to switching with Maxi, and then Maxi unfortunately got hurt, so we don't like to see that. Two star point guards getting hurt against the Clippers this season with Steph and Maxi. That was weird. But hope he's okay. Sixers having their injury problems so far, but Embiid should be back after the suspension. But overall, I thought we did a good job adjusting to that with Harden getting two guys thrown at him in that pick and roll. Made some solid passes. And I thought Harden had a really good third quarter. Really good. Started to get going offensively. Got to the line. I thought in the first half he was trying to foul bait way too much. Way too much. Um, But in the second half, consistently finding the open man. But also staying aggressive in that against that drop coverage because Drummond was just staying attached to Zoo. They were, you know, hoping that the Caleb Martins, the Kelly Oubre's, the Paul Georges guarding at the point of attack and even Maxi could fight over the screen and Harden being a guy who's not super into taking mid ranges or accustomed to doing it and always needs to get to that little step back is not super comfortable walking into it and doesn't stop on a dime for it. They thought, you know, we can get over the screen and, and contest and I thought he did a pretty good job even though he wasn't making a lot of them to keep taking them, got a, a floater, a little mid-range towards the end of the game or second half I should say and ended up with 18 points four rebounds six assists three steals and a block so I love the activity defensively to have three steals and a block but he still turned the ball over too much with six turnovers he shot five for 15 from the field one for six from three and seven for nine from the foul line so let me just say this in 34 minutes of play he's shooting terribly right now terribly but we're four and four and he still has a pretty big impact on the games Pretty big is an understatement. Imagine if James starts hitting his shots. Now, there is a level of that he's seen the best defenders on teams. He just does not have that same burst to get to the rim all the time. Although he did get by Caleb Martin a couple times in this game, full-on blow-bys. Doesn't have that same elevation at the rim. He needs to take mid-ranges and floaters in the in-between game, and he's actually doing it. He just doesn't make a lot of them. The three ball's been just not looking great this season. I think a lot of it is fatigue as well. And also not elevating the same way, just being as spry as he once was. He is getting older. It happens. But he's still doing a lot, and he's still been the second-best player on this Clipper team with Zubats being the third, in my opinion. But Norman Powell has been the guy. But defensively, I think the guy that really changed the game, Chris Dunn. His ball pressure, his activity in terms of on the dribble handoffs, getting his hands active. I mean, we forced a lot of turnovers uh, in this game on, on Wednesday night. 20 to be exact. 20 on the Sixers, and we had 
27 points off those turnovers. So we have a much better job now of being able to get out and run when we force turnovers. And here's the crazy part. The Sixers shot 55% from the field and still only scored 98 points. 55%. They didn't shoot well from three. 28% set on seven for 25 shooting. Whereas we shot very well from three. 43%. 12 for 28. We'll take that. So two straight games of shooting 40 plus percent from three. And then they shot poorly from the foul line, 11 for 19. We shot 16 for 19. So 58% versus 84%. We also had 27 assists to their 19. So just a great job moving the ball when we saw two on the ball, which a lot of times it was hard in creating, at times norm creating. But yeah, very good win overall. Chris Dunn continues to be so good defensively and so consistent. I said last episode he's been the most consistent player on the team, but I take that back. It's been Norm and then Chris Dunn second. But man, we held Maxi to just 12 points and he played 32 minutes. Paul George to 18 in 24 minutes. Kelly Oubre had a very good game shooting the ball though. 18 points on 8 for 12 shooting. And former Clipper, very briefly Clipper, KJ Martin had 10 points on 5 for 6 from the field. By the way, how about that lob pass from Harden to Kai Jones from half court? That was insane. Kyle Lowry had a donut. 0 for 3 from the field. Our good friend Eric Gordon was playing for the Sixers. Had 1 point in 17 minutes. 0 for 2. How about Reggie Jackson? We showed him a lot of love in this game. Reggie Chance. He acknowledged the crowd several times. And that was beautiful to see. If it's a Zubats, here's the great part about Zoo. Solid game. Didn't even feel like he did too much. 15 points, 9 rebounds, 3 assists. So he's getting better passing out of those out of those crowded situations. 1 steal, just 1 turnover, and a very efficient 7 for 9 from the field. And another 30-plus minute game with 33 minutes. I mentioned Derek Jones with 14. Terrence Mann, 7 points, 2 boards, 2 assists, and a steal. No turnovers, though, which you like to see. On 3 for 6 from the field, 1 for 3 from deep. I just think he still needs to be more aggressive or we should start coffee because Amir had a very solid game yet again, finishing in transition, solid defense, which he's going to play about like 80% of the time and knocking down the three ball, 11 points off the bench for Amir to go along with three boards, no turnovers on 50% from the field, four for eight and two for three from deep in 25 minutes. KPJ, he's the last guy I'm going to talk about. A lot of fans are sour on him already. He just stagnates ball movement. He takes really bad shots. He was one for four in this game. Two points, two rebounds, three assists, two turnovers. People are out of, he's just grown out of favor. People want Miller or Bones. And I think Bones might have similar issues, but maybe he'll get in the paint more with his speed. I think he's definitely a better passer and he might be a more efficient shooter. KPJ's passing up open threes now because he knows he's brick. He knows he's bricking and he's taking very tough shots. And he just doesn't make the right reads on pick and rolls. Whether it be he should keep his dribble alive more uh, for longer. He misses an open man rolling to the basket. He misses the weak side corner guy. He just doesn't make the right reads. It's not easy. I, I'm not saying it is. Chris Dunn at the highest plus minus of any clipper. Four points though in the game. Five assists, one board, two steals. On 2-for-3 shooting, 0-for-1 from 3. Did have two turnovers, though, and we turned the ball over too much as well. 19. It's too many against a good team. We'll get exploited. Plus 17, though, for Chris Dunn. And then Nico Batum. I forgot to mention him. I said Kevin Porter was the last guy I was going to talk about, but Nico, I thought it was one of his better games, actually. Super active with his hands. You know, his ball pressure is really good, but he also just shrinks every passing window and passing angle with his hands. He does such a good job of, you know, using his wingspan and getting his hands on the ball. Seven points, two boards, three steals, no turnovers on three for six shooting, one for three from deep. He was a plus 11 in 20 minutes. And overall, we shot 57% from the field, 43% from three, and 84% from the line. Really good shooting splits, but it starts with our defense. And I thought Chris Dunn led that charge in that second half. I love our defensive intensity. It's just if we get Kawhi back, oh my God, this team's going to be amazing. Looks like he's going to miss the first 10 games, which we figured was going to happen. But, I mean, how much longer? The fans are not coming. We got to lower prices on parking. 70 bucks is a lot. 60 bucks is a lot. Come on. But overall, I'm happy with the team right now. But Norman Powell, he's looking like he might be <laughs> Bay Area territory. And I don't mean Golden State Warriors. I mean playing in the All-Star game. He had some fans say that to me after the game. And if he continues to play like this and we're a good team, you never know. He could have conversations. Started about him making the All-Star game in the Bay Area this year. 
big win, baby. I'm just happy that Paul George didn't get that win. And if you want to check out what it was like inside, check out my personal channel, Dime Dropper. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. And of course, Locked On Clippers, free and available wherever you get your podcast. You're home for all things LA Clippers from a diehard fan. Subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know every single time we post a video. If you can't watch the video, you can listen wherever you get your podcast. And of course, comment on the video. Let me know what you thought of Paul George, uh, what you think of him, what you thought of the reception, what you think. I mean, why aren't you going to games if you are a local fan? And your thoughts on the performance itself. And of course, I need to remind you all, because it really helps your boy and the network. Your favorite podcast now is a newsletter. Introducing the Locked On Clippers newsletter. Daily newsletter. One stop for ultimate team and league coverage delivered right to your inbox. Sign up for free now at LockedOnDaily.com. That's LockedOnDaily.com. And start your day with the all-new free Locked On Clippers newsletter. The age-old proverb continues. Go Clippers, my player of the game, Norman Powell. You better believe it.